Jordan starts us off in Pittsburgh. Hey, Jordan, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Sure. How can um, we help? Yeah, I'm just going to jump right into a little story and ask a question concerning that story. So recently, my wife and I, we actually suffered a miscarriage of our twin babies around 14 weeks pregnant. Uh, um, currently, uh, yeah, currently yeah, we have, um, oh, thank you. Um, currently, we have a two-year-old at home as well as a dog. And my wife, she actually wants uh, another puppy, a uh, golden retriever, and her birthday is coming up soon. Um, I'm finding it hard to say no because in wake of all the grief and sorrow, um, my concern would be the cost because she is a vet tech and trained our dog really well. Um, she recently took a course through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a financial course, and I listen to your show as I drive for Uber, so we both understand the importance of eliminating debt as soon as possible. So my question is, um, you know, I love my wife very much and find it extremely hard to say no to a dog after all that has happened, especially on her birthday. But financially speaking, how does someone appropriately respond uh, in wake of a devastating event like a miscarriage? I think there's two approaches to that. I've I've um, sat in your exact seat and in all honesty, full disclosure, I handled it pretty poorly. And so I'm going to speak to you from somebody who did that the wrong way. Um, and then I'd love to hear what you have to say, Dave. I, I, I think first and foremost, you've got to recognize in a real immediate right now kind of way and in a deep and profound way that y'all two are going to grieve this differently. And there's not a right and wrong way to grieve it. There's just a wrong way to approach it, which is that you and or her, but usually it's the guy, um, decides that his way of grieving is best and so it's time to move on and let's get there let's get there quickly and so honoring her and her grief system number two you're going to need to she's going to need to get somebody in her life that is a mentor of some shape form or fashion um that kid has been there that can listen that can talk with her um and not let her be alone in this situation i think telling somebody um well my recommendation is always nobody make any long-term decisions like buying a dog or buying a car, or buying a house for six months to a year after you have some sort of loss. Um, that was the advice I got from my counselor at the time. And that's the advice I've continued to give to folks over the years. I know that can be hard as a husband. Um, that's usually a conversation that somebody's, uh, that's usually a response that somebody's feeling disconnected. And so what I'd recommend you to do is go find somebody you can talk to together. Um, and talk about loss and loneliness. And sometimes that takes the air out of the need to go spend, go buy, go replace. Um, that's just a grieving moment that is all messed up in disconnection. Um, have you sat down and, and talked to somebody with her? Have you all talked to somebody? Um, we both have a really strong support system, but we haven't talked to like somebody specifically together. We've talked about it a lot. And then since she's been to counseling, that's kind of one of the things here in Pittsburgh that they did for her um, on one of her follow-up appointments. They got her hooked up with a counselor. So I recommend y'all go together and mm -hmm. have somebody, have a neutral third party that's sitting there with you that you can talk about what does coping behavior look like and what does tomorrow look like and what does trying to punt the pain down the road, which is what buying a dog is, um, and really give y'all some strategies and tools right now to sit in it together. So you're hearing loud and clear, Jordan, that not buying the dog is not about money. Right. It's about it's about it's a uh, uh, it's a coping mechanism, and it allows you to not deal with what you need to go deal with. Is what Dr. John's saying. Okay. So the two of you sit mm -hmm. down with somebody, and um, you should make a decision to do long-term things like buy a dog. Um, like um, children, um, like um, buying a house or a big investment or something from a point of emotional health and strength. And when you guys have been, when anyone, anyone's been through what you guys have been through, you're not, at, you're not strong right now. And just say that out loud and say, because I'm not strong, I'm not making big decisions right now. And, and if you can get her to say that with you, then the dog thing goes away, but it's not because Dave Ramsey said, no, you need to get out of debt, not buy a dog. 
um, you know, your feelings be damned. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not that's not the discussion you're that we're having here. And so, uh, although I will tell you that possibly the best dog on the planet is the golden retriever. I'm going to strongly disagree. I like the Basset Hound, but, <laughs> but, um, and I think it's also important for guys out there to say out loud, um, Basset, Basset Hound. I love me a Basset Hound, man. I love Basset Hound. It took me a minute to get that one. I couldn't even get the picture in my they head. They just look like God had some miscellaneous parts left over <laughs> and he <laughs> stuck them together and was like, <laughs> let this, let's let this one go. Um, yeah, they're the most stubborn, obnoxious, See, I told smelly, you the, other, the, the lovely old, dogs. The golden is loving and kind. Yeah, I don't Sweet. need. I don't need that kind of love. This I need some big to, eyes and just loves you when you when you're you know it's the right kind of dog. No, I just you probably basset hound. Basset hounds, man. You I should never get saw one, it Dave. coming. I never saw that one coming. <laughs> get I, one, Dave. I would have guessed pug or something, but I would have <laughs> seen basset hound coming.